Welcome to Statistics Made Simple. I am Savita Valsang. In this video, I will be explaining the topic inventory theory where I will give the definition and also explain the need for inventory and what are the advantages of holding an inventory and the various terminologies and concepts involved in it. Let's begin with the definition of an inventory. An inventory is a physical stock of goods that are stored for purposes of further production or sales. Now the inventory may include raw materials, finished goods or semi-finished goods. An inventory problem concerns stocking of goods and sometimes too much inventory results in idle capital and too little inventory causes frequent interruption which may result in losses to the concern. So there is a need to decide when to acquire goods and how much should be ordered so that the cost is minimized and the profit is maximized. Some of the examples for inventory are a car dealer maintains an inventory of cars of different brands and models. A mechanic maintains an inventory of nuts, bowls, spares, etc. needed for repairs. A hospital maintains an inventory of drugs, beds, specialized personnel, etc. So what is the need for inventory? It will improve customer service. It will reduce the cost. It helps when there is irregular supply and demand. It helps in quantity discounts and it helps in avoiding stock out or shortages and helps in increasing goodwill that is inventory avoids loss of goodwill. What are the advantages of inventory? Bulk production will lead to decrease in cost of production, transportation and maintenance. It enables fast shipment of goods to the customers. It helps in increasing profit if market prices increase. And there is a decrease in setup cost if the inventory is large. Do remember some of these points. What are the disadvantages of holding an inventory? An inventory results in cost of warehouse rent. It leads to pay of interest on capital investment. Labor is required for records maintained. And labor is also required for maintenance of inventory. There results in loss if goods prices fall and if there is deterioration and depreciation. I will now explain the important terminologies and notations which are used in the inventory chapter. First is the purchasing cost which is also called as the production cost or the capital cost which is denoted by P. The cost of purchasing or manufacturing a unit of an item is called the purchasing cost. It includes the price paid for producing one unit of an inventory item. Second, we have the holding cost which is also called as the maintenance cost, the storage cost or the carrying cost which is denoted by C1. So the cost incurred in maintaining an inventory of items is called as the holding cost. It includes the storage space cost, interest on capital invested costs, taxes, insurance premium, spoilage, brokerage, maintenance of records, etc. This cost is expressed in per unit good per unit time. Third is the shortage cost, the penalty cost or the stockout cost which is denoted by C2. It is a cost associated with the inability or delay in meeting the demand because of shortages of stock. It includes loss of sales due to stock out or extra cost associated with emergency purchases or loss of production time due to shortage of raw materials. This cost is expressed in per unit good per unit time. Fourth, we have the setup cost or the ordering cost which is also called as the replenishment cost or the procurement cost which is denoted by C3. 
This is the cost associated with the setting up of machinery before starting production or the cost incurred when an order is placed. It includes cost of inspecting, stationary, transportation, labor. It is independent of the quality ordered. This cost is expressed per production run. The demand is denoted by R. It is the number of units required from the inventory per period. The pattern of demand will be fixed or variable with respect to time. If the demand is fixed, it is said to be deterministic. If the demand is a variable, it is said to be probabilistic. Then we have the lead time or the delivery lag. The time between ordering and receiving is called lead time. If the item is received as soon as it is ordered, lead time is said to be zero. Otherwise, the lead time will exist. Then we have the stock replenishment or the order quantity. That's also the lot size or the run size, which is denoted by Q. It is the rate at which items are added to the inventory to maintain a certain level. term is the frequency of replenishment which is denoted by n. It is the number of times a replenishment is done in unit time that is a year. Then we have the reorder time, rescheduling time or the production time which is denoted by t that is the time gap between two replenishments is called as a reorder time. Then we have the time horizon it is the time period over which the inventory is maintained. 11 is the economic order quantity which is EOQ or the economic lot size which is ELS. This is the size of the order or it is the aggregate of setup cost and holding cost of inventory which is minimum. Now inventory problems where demand is deterministic are called EOQ problems or economic lot size problems. Let me now explain the types of variables in an inventory problem. First, we have the control variables. The variables which may be controlled by us are called control variables. Examples, quantity of goods acquired, frequency of replenishment, completion stage of stocked items, etc. Uncontrolled variables, the variables that may not be controlled are called uncontrolled variables. Examples are cost, demand, lead time, etc. The terminologies and the notations are very important in this topic, inventory theory. Do practice and learn all the notations thoroughly. Thank you all for watching and look out for my next video on inventory models and solutions to model 1.